Hi everyone, welcome to this episode of Kuiper Labs. In today's episode, we're going to be discussing open chains and rings when we come to carbohydrates. Okay, so so far we've looked at the that in um, carbohydrates we have mono, di, oligo, and polysaccharides, or which is comes from the Greek that relates to sugars. Okay, so monosaccharides, disaccharides, oligo, and polysaccharides. Okay, and so today we're going to focus on a curious, a curious kind of behaviour that we see when we're thinking about monosaccharides. Okay, so we've talked about monosaccharides like glucose before. Okay, so I'm going to use a nice fine pen to make it a little, try and make it a little bit easier to see the structure of glucose kind of coming out here. Okay, so we've got our CH2OH group up here, and then we've got all of these kind of other points in the ring. Okay, so we've got OH is pointing down at these sides. Okay, and then we've got an OH up here and down here. Okay, so I like to think about it, um, and then there's a hydrogen here, in terms of the OH groups being down, up, down, down, in this um, kind of arrangement. Or, if you want to think that both of these are pointing down and then these two are flipped. Okay, but what we notice, so this is glucose, just to remind you, <clears throat> is that glucose is able to, it exhibits this, this strange behaviour where this ring doesn't actually have to stay locked, closed. It's actually able to, uh, unlike other ring structures in, in organic chemistry, is actually able to open. And so what it does is it opens um, around about here. Okay, and so what we end up with, glucose is, which this is our, um, this is one version of it, it actually ends up being in equilibrium with this version. Okay, so what we have here, um, this, these, these substances are both glucose, okay, and they are in constant equilibrium with one another in solution. Okay, no, not so much when it's locked into the crystalline kind of structure, but in terms of being actually able to um, open and close at relatively easily with little energy input. And so what happens um, is that, um, so what we see over here, that oxygen over here, and I'll, I'll highlight it with this green box, is the same as this oxygen over here is that even though we're drawing this as, as kind of opposite ends of a molecule, that there are they are actually able to this, because of the size and the length of this molecule and the way that these bonds kind of interact, that it actually kind of bends and flexes and can, can rotate around so that this oxygen and this carbon um, become very near to each other. They kind of fold into this kind of horseshoe short, sort of shape. Okay, a bit like, like around like that, like that being the oxygen over here and then this being this carbon over here. Okay, and so what happens is, and then this rest of the molecule kind of attached over here is that <clears throat> this carbon over here has a slight positive charge because of the presence of this electronegative oxygen over here. This um, oxygen over here we know is delta negative, a slight negative charge because this is a polar bond. So all of a sudden, what we have as this this kind of arrangement works itself out is that we have a slightly a negative thing and a positive thing that become quite near to one another. And what happens is that then they actually attract together close enough that um, these covalent bonds are actually able to rearrange to make that a permanent connection. And then what that can do is that then that means that this oxygen has too many bonds, and then this one of these bonds has broken. Um, puts the electrons back onto the oxygen to make the, the carbon still attached to four things. And then what that does is that this hydrogen can relocate to be attached to the oxygen over here. Okay, look, I understand that's really quite complicated, and ultimately that's a lot of that is more university-level organic chemistry, being able to picture and, and describe that sort of rearrangement. But all I really want you to take out, away from this is this idea that due to the nature of this structure, that it's actually able to, um, these parts that are able to lock together into a ring, and then the ring is able to open up. Okay, so here we have our ring, and here we have what's called the open chain version. 
Now the reason that we care about this is not be only because chemistry is awesome, but also because this open chain version is responsible for lots of the behaviour we're going to see in a few, you know, a little bit further down the line in terms of what we call reducing and non-reducing sugars, okay, due to the presence of this group up the end here. Okay, this is called an aldehyde group, is our old-fashioned but otherwise name that sticks. Okay, and then it's it's due to what this group can do in its reaction that then um yeah, then we get some different things happening. Now we also see the same sort of thing um that's present in um in fructose. Okay, so another another quick example. So the arrangement in fructose is slightly different. Okay, that we actually have um we're still a hexose sugar with with um, five a six carbon sorry, um, but that we actually have the the this ring is actually a pentagonal shape, okay? So, so that you can see that there's only five things, four carbons and one oxygen that um, are connected in this ring, okay? And then we've got two CH two OH groups, okay? But then we get the same sort of idea um, taking place over here. Okay, and so this is what our structure looks like. Okay, so you can still see that we have a group that's quite similar in fructose to the aldehyde group that we have in glucose, but this is actually called a ketone group. Now you don't need to be able to, to identify the names there, but you do need to recognise that what these things are. So they contain a, a carbon-oxygen double bond. Um, here it's on the end carbon, which is why it's called an aldehyde. Here it's in between two carbons, which is why it's called a ketone. Okay, um, and so we still get the same idea that our green oxygen, okay, is interacting with this carbon just like this one up here, okay, um, to, to then kind of close up to form the ring. And so then we get the CH2OH, CH2OH, and this is our oxygen in the ring, okay? So both of these monosaccharides are able to do this, that they're able to do this, this swapping and, and changing um, backwards and forwards. Um, and so what that then um, affects, though, is in terms of, um, yeah, so, so that... It's, it will illustrate the sort of thing that we look at in the reducing and non-reducing sugars a little later on, being able to see um, how these groups behave. All right, thanks very much for watching. Bye for now.